Hi, everybody. It uh, was definitely important to talk about the problems that have been plaguing our cities. But now it's time to offer up some solutions. Uh, what I mean by solutions, I mean by taking preventative and interventive measures. Uh, one, we can start with self-awareness and self-enlightenment. And what I mean by self-awareness and self-enlightenment, I mean take the time to learn who you are as a person. Do you know who you are creatively? Do you know what you like to do? One of my quotes I'm going to say again is our souls encounter an insidious death when we are forced to kill our creativity. Our creativity is how we express ourselves, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we do our hair. That's part of creativity. And if we aren't allowed to be the creative beings our creator put us here to be, to be we slowly die inside and we don't realize it. We're walking around like zombies. So I urge you all to take part in learning about yourself and take part in, uh, go see a self-awareness coach. It, it is definitely needed. Uh, if you, uh, wherever you are in any, any urban state, make sure you go see, you know, mentoring programs. For single moms out there, you know, go, go take part in groups for single mom, mother groups, and same thing for single fathers. Please, we need you to take part in mentoring programs to make yourself better, to build who you are as a person, build your self-esteem, build your self-love and your self-worth so you can go ahead and give that to your child. And you can go ahead and share that with the people in your community. And you can make your community a better place to be. One day, one step, one preventive, one interventive me uh, measure at a time. Again, my name is Arlene Ramsey. You can reach me at Facebook or on Facebook at Arlene J. Ramsey, Twitter at Arlene J. Ramsey, and Instagram at Lee J. I'll pass you over uh, to Brother Muhammad. There's nothing cool about being dead. I don't care how much swag you have. Swag count for nothing when you're laying in the casket. I, I, I just want to just give you a realistic picture here. Don't allow your mother to make the decision if she should bury you or cremate you because she didn't have enough money. Don't let your mother have to make a decision as if she should put on some regular clothes for you or a suit that you never wore. Don't let your mother make that type of decision. And I want those who will listen to me out there, you matter. I just want to let you know you matter. I don't care what you're going through. You are great beyond measures. And I want you to follow me as I close out. I want you to think of yourself as I'm telling you this story. Everybody that's listening to me, I want you to picture you as the person I'm talking to. I'm going down to the medical examiner because I got to go down because someone just got murdered. You just got murdered. I want you to picture yourself laying in a cold room after they had just put the wire incision on you, move your organs and take your brain out. And they put it in the garbage bag and sew it back up in your stomach. And I'm coming to pick you up. I pick you up from that cold refrigerator and bring you back to the funeral home. Now, once again, I want you to think this is you. Nobody else. I want you to think it's you that I'm talking to. And I open up the bag. And when I open up the bag, your, 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 your skull cap is kind of slid off to the side because they can't put it back tight. So you, you, you can see the, the separation between your, your head and your skull just laying to the side. And I bring you onto that coal and bombing table. Right? And as I bring you onto that coal and bombing table, I start taking scissors and cutting up through your abdomen and over here to remove the sutures that's been sutured together here. And I open up your flap. This is you I'm talking to. This is what's happened because you wanted to be about that life. Now I got you on that table, and I'm about to inject you. I'm about to embalm you. Now it's, I got to take about an hour or a half, hour and a half to embalm you to make sure that I give you back to your mother as best as I can. Now only that, you got bullet wounds all in your face. So I got to determine how I'm going to patch up those bullet wounds on your face so that your mother don't have to have to close casket. And as I inject that embalming fluid with that artery, ar arterial tubes down both of your femorals, in your axillaries, underneath your armpits, and both of your carotids, this is you. As I have to go up in that carotid artery and pull your flap of your scalp back over your chin, and I got to clap, clamp off the circle of Willis. So that's why, if you don't do that, when you embalm, it will shoot embalming fluid out the circle of Willis, so I got to clamp it off so it builds pressure up in your face on both sides. Then I got to take a needle about this long 
which we call a trocar. And I got to stick it all in your legs and your backside, up your back, to make sure that you stop decomposing so your body can be just whole just about time so we can get you to the grave site. And then I'll take your organs out of that bag and pour some fluid on there to make it hard so it doesn't have a stench to it or odor to it. And then the day coming up to your view, this is you again I'm talking to. I got to sew you back up, so I'll put that bag back in your stomach, right? And as I sew you up, I got to put your skull together. So I got to drill holes into your skull and put calibrating clamps on both of them so your skull cap don't slip. And sometimes if it's slipping, to keep it in place, you know, you, you can't put the brain because it's gone. We put newspaper, put some cotton into your, into the, into the, in your cranium, and we sew you, suture you back up, right? Then now we got to dress you, put your clothes back on you, and put you in a casket to give you back to your mother. Do you want that? I don't think nobody with good common sense want that. And I know you don't want to put your mother through the pain and hardship of putting you in the ground. Because like I said, you may have homies on the street, but your homies ain't there when it's time to pay that bill. It is your mother, who is barely making it, who got to put her pennies, her nickels, and her dimes, and her hard-earned dollars together to give you a decent burial, or you get buried as an indigenous in Potter's family. Family, I hope one day that we can take this platform about black on black violence, not just here in our city, throughout. And I just need more funeral directors, more, more teachers. I need you to step up. I need you to come from behind that lofty death, desk. I need you to come from profiting off the pain and suffering of our people. I need you to get involved. I need you to come out and talk to these people and let them know what we're going through and what we bear witness and what we see every day. That's important, man. Because if we show that we truly care about our people, everybody else will come in. Because they already, we're already stigmatized as a funeral home anyway. See, I just want to appeal to you. We're losing too many of our young brothers and sisters. Too many. Far too many. And as I always say as I close out, we can either address the issue now or I'll be addressing you later. Thank you.